If you want to learn something about God, shut your mouth and listen to me for a minute. Many, many children healed. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because the growth cells have stopped. I don't make this stuff up. Behold the atheist's nightmare. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Why do they teach every other theory in science except creation? Warlocks are enemies of God. You know, no one's ever going to convince me. That, uh, that the Word of God is, is not true. You know if you put Jesus Christ first that He'll look after all your bills. And so the devil said, okay, it's a deal. And if you want to tell me how to live my life, it better line up with the Word of God or shut your mouth. I'm loaded. I'm pregnant with miracles. What do you believe? Send us the cash. Welcome to the Bible Dumb Podcast. This is the podcast where two atheists read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Z. <laughs> from Genesis to Revelations. I am Davy Hell. I am Jesse Hell. And we are back for another Bible time. <laughs> it's time for the last few chapters of Deuteronomy, I think. I don't know if it, we'll probably won't end it this episode, but next two will be done. This one and maybe one more. And I'm excited about that because Deuteronomy has been, uh, you know, not the best. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was better than Leviticus. For sure. But it basically is Leviticus just repeated. Yeah. So uh, we got a letter from hell. Yay. Yay. Let's, let's check it out. Hey, Davey and Jesse. As I mentioned in a comment on YouTube, I was brought up with this shit. (laughs) My mom encouraged me to read the Bible from cover to cover, which nowadays I find shocking there were movies and music I wasn't allowed to watch or listen to. But apparently reading about genocide, plagues, sacrifices, and that whole thing with Lot and his daughters is fine. (laughs) But the big thing is, you can't question God or the Bible. It will anger him. I trusted my mom. She was a single mom. And went through a lot to raise us. She's a good-hearted person in the end. Yeah, so... I imagine Rach is from England. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> With the mum. Or she could be Australian, yeah, too, she... maybe. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that is pretty funny that there are so many, like, religions that... Or at least that's, like, a hallmark of Christianity, of like this puritanism of like, oh, don't watch an R-rated movie where it shows like a naked body. Yeah. Yeah, That'll corrupt you. And yet, like she said, lots out there. Heck, Noah's out there with his dong hanging out. (laughs) Well, there's so many people now that are trying, you know, with all the library bans and stuff. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of people now trying to go through, and well, not a lot, a few people who are going through and trying to get the Bible banned. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> Getting the Bible banned from schools because of subject matter? Uh-huh, yeah. That They're sounds like a satanic temple uh, tactic. Yeah. Use your own rules against you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, she says, anyway, we went to a Pentecostal church. You know anything about them? Uh, They wear like the prairie skirts. Oh. Right? Am I, I don't know. Up? I may be wow. making that up. I I don't trust me. There were we had some people at our school mm-hmm. um in my grade there was a girl who always wore like homemade dresses. Yeah, I think they were Pentecostal. Interesting. Yeah, one of the sisters was at my grade. Which I think's pretty cool. I mean, I'm down with DIY stuff. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> yeah. It's just they're, you know, pretty old fashioned. But that's not why they were wearing them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's like to keep it DIY. Um, you have the DIY. She said, we went to a Pentecostal church. They were uh, something else. Very preachy and always talking about demons and the devil. There's not even been any demons or devil in the Bible yet. <laughs> and uh, It's been very disappointing, very in, the, disappointing. in the devil department. She says, when I was 12, an old lady said she saw demons jumping on me. I know, right? The image that conjures. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. Like they were, like she could visualize them jumping all over her body. 
<laughs> it just says jumping on me. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what this lady was saying. I think she needed some psychiatric help. Yeah. So the church decided I was possessed with lying spirits. I was a quiet girl who kept to myself. So I think in the end, it's because they didn't like my mom, who was the same as me, read her Bible and didn't join in with the gossip and ridiculous demon shit they went on about. Yeah. If you are not participating in whatever your in-group is participating in, you become a target oh, immediately. Yeah, for sure. Like if you don't drink, like, and everybody else is drinking, you will get harassed. <laughs> People will come up and say, hey, how come you're not drinking? Mm-hmm. Same thing with like being a vegan and not eating what everybody else is eating. Like, you're not going to bring it up, but everybody else in the room oh, will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So probably is why you're Can singled you out. Can you eat this? Yeah. Can you eat this? <laughs> I can. I don't want to. <laughs> They often said things to her like, God told me you were a prostitute and an alcoholic. I didn't even know why we went there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you should get the hell out of there. These people sound awful. So to bring the story back, the church wanted to perform an exorcism on me. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's That's... awful. Lucky for me, my mom told them where they could stick it at, and we finally left the church. I was so happy. My mom hasn't gone back to any church since then. She still believes, but she just focuses on being a good person and following Jesus. That I got no problem with. Yeah, that's totally cool. She's really lucky she had, sounds like she had a good mom. Yeah. There were a lot of parents that would just go with it. And isn't there like a main huge part of the Bible where Jesus like helps prostitutes and is nice to prostitutes? (laughs) Yeah, doesn't he like wash their feet or something? Yeah. Like... Not saying your mom's a prostitute, but, you know, even if she was, they should be the ones being nice to her, not calling her out and ostracizing her and trying to exercise her daughter. Just weird hypocrites. But yeah, I don't have a problem with someone just following the teachings of Jesus. You know, I hear, I hear they're pretty good. I'm excited to get to that. (laughs) All right. She says, I mean, it's one of two things. God's a liar. Or they're lying. I'm putting my bets on them lying. Especially since I've come to know God doesn't even exist. And I've wasted a large portion of my life. Oh, you you didn't waste your life. (laughs) You had experiences that got you to where you are now. Yeah, exactly. She says, or maybe I'm still possessed. I like that. Enjoying this podcast. You guys are funny. I wish religion would be eradicated. It fucks you up. See you in hell, Rach. Ah, thank you, Rach. Yay. That's awesome. Yeah, agreed. Eradicate religion. Just, we don't need it. You can learn. You can learn from good lessons from the Bible like we're doing. Yeah. But uh, it's unnecessary to be, <laughs> you don't need an exorcism. <laughs> You're cool. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. All right. Well, let's jump into it. I feel like this week has gone by super fast. Mm. I feel like it was just last weekend. (laughs) (laughs) Chapter 27. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law, when thou art passed over, and thou mayest go unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore it shall be, when ye gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones which I command you this day, in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings, and thou shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. 
So is this like Stonehenge <laughs> or a Stonehenge type structure? <laughs> Maybe. Sounds like it, Sounds like, like whole stones, but they're all supposed to be carved up. I wonder if this is a thing <laughs> like a, that still exists or is said to exist in a certain place, you know? I wonder if there's some kind of uh, archae archaeological evidence for this. Oh, I'm sure somebody has. At least it. faked it. Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't know what its name would be. Like, I don't know. I've never heard of this before. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye are come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad and Asher and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. This is our first Amen. Amen. <laughs> Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say Amen. Amen. What does it mean to setteth light by his father or his mother? I mean, obviously this is a reference to honor thy father and mother, but that's just a weird phrase. Any guesses? No. <laughs> <laughs> Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say Amen. Amen. <laughs> Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and widow, and all the people shall say Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovereth his father's skirt, and all the people shall say amen. Amen? <laughs> your, your mom? Okay, I was kind of following along there for a while, because we've heard all this stuff before. We had to review some of these, because now I'm questioning. I was too excited with my amens and not quite listening <laughs> to what you were saying. Well, let's start with this one. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife. Okay, I got that. Mm-hmm. Don't your sleep mom. with your mom <laughs> or stepmom <laughs> because he uncovereth his father's skirt. What is I that? Don't know. I don't. It, it's it can't be like his like clothes, right? And it can't be like. <laughs> is it like his bed sheet? Mm, yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, he's taking peeks. <laughs> Wait. I don't know. <laughs> Uncovereth his father's skirt. No you know clue. I mean, like, no go clue. into his bed and sleep with his mom. <laughs> I don't know. Those are gross. Gross and weird. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say amen. Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. Amen. What was that one? 
just do everything I just said. Oh. And if you don't, then you're cursed. All right, so let's review. Are we cursed, or did we make it through this unscathed? Let's see. Let's see. I, I know a few of them I'm good on. Like, um, Okay, we'll just go back to front. So, uh, taketh a reward to slay an innocent. Hitman, no. don't be a hitman. No. Uh, don't kill your neighbor secretly. No. That was not a confident no. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> don't sleep with your mother-in-law. Safe no. there. Don't sleep with your sister. Safe there. Don't, don't sleep with a beast. Safe there. Don't sleep with your mom. Safe there. <laughs> uh. All right. Don't perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow. So basically, I'm basically just take care of these people. Because that's what I said earlier. Yeah. Um... I could probably do better. <laughs> sure. I mean, helping others could always do better. Uh, don't make the blind wonder out of the way. <laughs> Safe there. <laughs> Safe there. Yeah, I actually have a friend, a good friend who's blind and no worries because if he needs his way cleared, he will do it. <laughs> we were at a uh, very busy like crafts fair. His daughter had it set up in the high school and I was driving him around and we went there together and it was so crowded and I was standing in front just being like, excuse us, you know, pardon me, excuse us. And he's like, uh, that, dude, get behind me. I got this covered. And he just started swinging his blind stick like back and forth in front of him and just walking like just super fast speed walking down the hallway just saying blind man coming through watch out i'm blind out of the way <laughs> just jumped in behind him and we passed through the crowd parted that <laughs> sea of people like the red sea it was great uh, i have a really funny blind story from this week oh what's that um at work we have this kid that had an injury and is now blind um but you wouldn't really know it by seeing him or by looking at him. And um, one of the nurses who was not familiar with him, we had him out at the nurse's station. And he's like this cute little kid. And she was like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And she held up her hand. And she goes, "You want? can I get a high five or something like that? You know? And, <laughs> and he just stood there and he goes, I'm blind. <laughs> She's like, She died oh. a little inside. She died a lot. <laughs> Somebody else just goes, okay, let's go this way. <laughs> Took him away. <laughs> she was like, oh my gosh. That's funny. All right. Uh, have you <laughs> removeth your neighbor's landmark? <laughs> landscaping crimes? <laughs> I haven't, I've done no landscaping crimes. Setteth a light by his father or mother. I have not set my father or mother on fire. <laughs> Or making any graven or molten image. Mm. I'm going to say no. Yeah, no. I'm not, no. We're pretty not materialistic. We don't really worship our possessions. We tend to throw them out yeah. <laughs> quicker than we probably should. Yeah, no. Yeah, cool. We're safe. I'm going to say not cursed. Same, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Chapter 28. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed be, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thou when thou comest in, and blessed shall be thou when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, 
and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth. Yeah, this is like the, uh, you know, first we got the curses, now we got the blessings. But they're not saying amen for the blessings. It's kind of lame. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, and he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand nor to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be thy fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy kind, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall be thou when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. So this I was thinking about yesterday because I got back to reading that uh, Pathogenesis book and uh, just talking about how common it was for people to see these diseases that run among among civilizations as curses or blessings from God. Specifically, it was talking about Cortez and Pizarro and how they were able to just like decimate the Incas and Aztecs and the other South American, tri- you know, indigenous peoples, <laughs> like with incredibly few numbers. Like they had like a couple hundred conquistadors against like a full civilization of mm-hmm. thousands of trained warriors. And that's because, I mean, they're just decimated by these plagues. But what I found interesting was the conquistadors saw it as a sign that their religion, that they were being blessed by God, that all their enemies were falling sick. But also the Native Americans also thought they were being cursed by God and Tons of them converted to Christianity because of it, so it's because they were being overtaken by all these illnesses that they didn't understand, and they thought they were being cursed because they weren't following the same gods as the Christians that mm-hmm. were there, you know, taking over. And uh, the but theory did- of the book was that that's why Catholicism is so widespread among South Americans, oh, yeah, even to today, which is just so interesting. How didn't how does nobody though go well we were fine till you came uh, well i'm there i'm sure there were i mean i'm sure I it wasn't like everybody <laughs> well another interesting part is said was that they this the spanish didn't take like they were so fervent in their conversion i guess that they didn't feel right taking those people as slaves so they only took slaves of the ones that didn't convert okay. to Christianity. There, yeah, there you are. There you go. That's what it is. They didn't believe they weren't following the same God. They were saying... <laughs> they didn't want to be enslaved. Oh, okay. Well, well I mean, convert. I'm sure, yeah. It's... And then after a couple of generations, then people actually do convert. Sure, it's a combination of both. There but... you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. 
The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with fever, and with inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Ooh. Basically just listed every ailment. Yeah. <laughs> so if anything bad happens, it's God. If anything good happens, that's God. <laughs> thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. <laughs> what? That's what it says. <laughs> I can't be right. <laughs> thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell within. Oh, this is more this of is what will happen. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I thought it was a commandment for a second. It's like, <laughs> God is commanding cuckolds? <laughs> All right, so if you're bad, then if you betroth the wife, another man will sleep with her. And thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt Thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So, I mean, this doesn't happen <laughs> to people, like, or at least not to every person that is mm -hmm. blasphemous. There's plenty of bad people that don't get smitten from head to toe. Yeah. I'm still doing pretty good. I've had a pretty charmed life. <laughs> it's not been bad, that's for sure. But, you know, I'm not sleeping with my mom or doing all the cursy bad things. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. And thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, or thine oil shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. You better be good or no olive oil. Oh, I'm going to be good. <laughs> thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. 
He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenedest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed for ever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. You didn't show favor to the young. <laughs> we just read numbers, dude. <laughs> you killed all the younglings. Plus, I was thinking while reading this, like, this is, like, the first hell. Like, this is, you know, just the intimidation factor. Yes. They're doing their very, very best to think of, like, all the worst things they can that will happen to you as, like, a punishment for not doing what they say. This mm -hmm. is, like, the first, like, you know, superstitious... Uh, well, maybe not the first, but, you know, this is, like, a superstitious threat yeah that's what, kind of what i was thinking as you were reading it and we're now we're starting to get into the uh i was also thinking this was kind of the first that we're here and where people who maybe just are in unfortunate living conditions not of their own choosing they're they read this or they go to church they may think well it's completely 100 percent my fault you know right yeah it's not helpful yeah or like you know you can blame people for their misfortune and just write them off and say oh they they probably deserve it yeah yeah mm -hmm. like so many people do with like the homeless yeah that's what i was thinking yeah yeah and he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed which also shall not leave thee either corn wine or oil or the increase of thy kind or flocks of thy sheep until he have destroyed thee and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou trustedest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, and the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. What? Thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body? the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters? What does that mean? It would be a cannibal? Mm, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward his, the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave. What? <laughs> the man who is tender among you and very delicate... His eye shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children. None of this makes sense, right? What does it mean by the man that is tender among you and very delicate? Maybe this like... like <laughs> a gay man who's like <laughs> been forced to marry? I don't know. No. Um, maybe just a person who um, is more empathetic. Okay. Why does he become evil? Well, okay. Maybe in one that... Okay, but what does it say there? Okay, this kind of goes with the previous passage where it says, Thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body and the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters, which mm -hmm. the Lord hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. So if you're being sieged and starving... He says you'll eat your children. I'm guessing. There's a crazy passage in the Plantagenets. I'm 
like halfway through that book about the English kings and queens and uh, King John, you know, the one from Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. um, he was obviously a very bad person. <laughs> and uh, one of the things he did was he locked up one of his duke's wife and child in a tower and just left them there to starve. And when they went and got the bodies, the, the kid had teeth marks on his body. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I guess the mom was starving and mm -hmm. tried to bite him. Well, the kid probably died first. So. Yeah. But uh, so this has precedence, this interpretation that we're getting. <laughs> yeah. Which is gross and hor horrifying to think about. But okay, so that's what leads into so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his. Okay, I get it. So, like, even the ki most kind person will yeah. be forced to break their moral uh you know rules mm -hmm. they'll go against their own nature and become evil because they're in such harsh conditions yeah we did it we figured it out yay <laughs> The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness wherein thy enemies shall distress thee in thy gates. Dang. <laughs> Lots of eating your babies. Yeah. That's crazy. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. All caps. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first, like, all caps that we've gotten so far. The Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass, that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good, and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you, and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. So not only will he do all these horrible things, he's going to like it because you were so bad. How do you feel about this? Do you feel like this is fair? No. I feel like right now they're just taking like what everybody would instinctively do or they faced with a life or death situation. Right. You can't judge somebody who's in a compromised state of mental clarity because they're being starved to death and under the threat of violence 24-7. Yeah. Like anybody's exactly. gonna break. I mean, I don't know if you'd break so bad that you start eating your kids, but I mean, you're probably just gonna start eating whoever dies first, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a strong biological urge to stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Uh, no, I don't. I don't like this. I don't like. I mean, like I said, I've, this feels like scare tactics to mm -hmm. me. This feels like they're trying to come up with the like most horrible shit they can possibly think of in order to intimidate your followers to doing what you say. Right. And like... Like it reminds me of like Catholic it also visions just, of hell or Baptists like... Yeah. Yeah. It also is just really weird like that these instances are, you know, examples that they use nobody's faced with like a very small population a very small portion of the population is going to be faced with these circumstances you would hope so <laughs> we live in some very privileged times where the yeah that's true siege tactics are not 
the That's common true. mode of That's warfare. True. I guess it was more common. Yeah. Haven't you seen Game of yeah. Thrones? Remember yeah. the Onion Knight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Hero fair. smuggling onions into the castle. That's fair. One of the coolest Maybe they characters. Need to hashtag update the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag update the Bible. Let's get that going viral. <laughs> what would be the current like if you do this, you're going to hell? If you do this, what, or what would be like their current the scare current tactics? Uh, your kid will turn trans. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's probably it. That's, I mean, that's what is happening. That is, like, the, they're, yeah. they're intimidating everybody. Like, if to, you send your kid to public school, yeah. they're going to turn them gay. Yeah. 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 That's it. Lame. Or they'll take your guns away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take away your meat. Or, yeah, the meat things. That's becoming a big thing. Yeah. Uh, that was a big one in Georgia. I think last presidential. Yeah, I remember run. getting a postcard at at one point. Did saying we like, get, the they, Democrats trying to take away your meat? Yeah, I know that came around a lot in like other southern states. I didn't see ours that we got. Yeah, it was a long time ago. But... I mean, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I wouldn't be against it, man. Yesterday, I spent some time arguing people online, just not arguing so much as just like really trying to make the case to these people. And maybe it's just the format that I was doing it in, but it's so disheartening to talk to people on like Instagram comment sections or whatever. Oh, just, yeah. just my faith in humanity just wildly goes from optimistic to complete nihilism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's hard to connect to people over a comment section yeah yeah maybe it's not the best place to spread ideas <laughs> the cesspool <laughs> yeah. of social media comment session sections all right and the lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Whoa. <laughs> so you're going to be a slave, but nobody's going to want you because you suck. <laughs> it's harsh. It's got to be the biggest insult you could give. I guess so, but why would you want to be bought? Well, it's like, but you're just, it's not like you're suddenly free. Yeah. That's you're just going to be sitting there. <laughs> chained up just like the last person to be chosen for the soccer scene <laughs> <laughs> but more disturbing and obviously I'm <laughs> not great although i don't know maybe it wouldn't be as bad as being picked because then you just gotta i don't know none of it's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think we should like categorize like which slave has it worse? <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> Chapter 29. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, unto Pharaoh and unto all his servants and to all his land. Stop yawning. <laughs> This is riveting 
biblical <laughs> scripture. <laughs> You're going to eat your babies if you don't stop. <laughs> the great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those miracles, yet the Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and thy soul is not waxen old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. And when ye came into this place, Sihon the king of Heshbon and Og the king of Bashan came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. And we took their land and gave it for an inheritance unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to half tribe of the Manasseh. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is within thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water, that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself and that he may be unto thee a God which he hath said unto thee and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. For ye know <laughs> for ye know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we may came and how we came through the nations which ye passed by, and ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Okay, so <laughs> everybody is having to go into this covenant whether they're there or not. <laughs> And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall, sh shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Okay. Going back, real quick, what does this mean? And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The fuck does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. So if you hear the curses, but you say to yourself, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart. I guess you just can't fake it. Like, if you do bad, you can't just, like, forget about it and be happy. Like, you're still going to have... Yeah. yeah like, oh, I just be... won't... I won't think about it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to do bad, but... Uh, I know I'm doing bad, but... Uh, I'll just continue and pretend it's not happening. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. That's what I'm going to go with. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law, so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you, and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land, and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning. Ooh, brimstone. There we go. <laughs> no, not woo. Oh, no, woo. Bad. <laughs> but yeah, this is like hell. Hell language. Yeah, definitely. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs>
that it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Admah and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. I don't remember Admah and Zeboim, just Sodom and Gomorrah. And all nations shall say, (laughs) Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which (laughs) which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against his land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Stay dumb, everybody. (laughs) Stay dumb. Or do you want to do one more chapter? (laughs) Um, What do we got left? There's a real short chapter, chapter 30. And the next one says, Moses is charged to Joshua. So it looks like it's going to change topics here. Uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more chapter. One more chapter. Chapter 30. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and thou mayest live. So they're going to have a circumcised heart, circumcised lips, and circumcised (laughs) (laughs) dinger-donger. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us to bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. So what is that saying? Mm, I don't know. I think it's maybe just this idea that it doesn't matter if nobody taught you these rules. These are the rules like in your heart so oh, like so you, the you fact can't... that i wasn't just paying attention doesn't <laughs> yeah i saw the <laughs> blank look on your face when i called you out like a student in class <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> 42 <laughs> uh... 
See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life. (laughs) Choose. (laughs) Choose life. Choose a job. Choose a career. Choose a family. Choose a fucking big television. Choose a washing machines, cars, compact disc players, and electric tin openers. Choose good health low cholesterol, and dental insurance. Choose fixed interest mortgage repayments. Choose a starter home. Choose your friends. Choose leisure wear and matching luggage. Choose a three-piece suite on higher purchase in a range of fucking fabrics. Choose DIY and wondering who you are on a Sunday morning. Choose sitting on that couch and watching mind-numbing, spirit-crushing game shows, stuffing fucking junk food into your mouth. Choose rotting away at the end of it all, Pishing your last in a miserable home, nothing more than an embarrassment to the selfish, fucked up brats you have spawned to replace yourself. Choose your future. Choose life. <laughs> uh, from Train Spotting, the, the one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, absolutely. Or at least my favorite author, Irvin Welsh. Love him. Shout out to. Uh, the podcast junk dilemmas therefore choose life that thou and thy seed may live that thou mayest love the lord thy god and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the lord swear unto thy fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob to give them beautiful (laughs) <laughs> Not manipulative at all. <laughs> all right. So now we know the consequences of our actions. <laughs> but I feel like we follow these Walt laws pretty good. Yeah, I think it's it's hard. You got to actively be trying to break these laws. Yeah, you got to just be like <laughs> sleeping with anybody and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, stay dumb, everybody. Stay dumb.